You guys, we're now just a mere few days away from Christmas, and if you're not feeling suitably merry yet, I think I've got the thing to get you in the mood. Yes, that's right, because now that I've spent three years living here in Sweden, I'm getting lots of questions from you guys about how Christmas in Sweden compares to where I'm from back in the UK. So today I thought it'd be fun to make a comparison video where I point out five of the differences between how we celebrate Christmas in those two countries. And before we get started, to be quite honest with you guys, you wouldn't have expected there to be much difference at all. I mean, Sweden and the UK are quite close neighbours, we're both North European states. You would have thought for that reason that our Christmas traditions are fairly similar. But let me tell you what, there are a lot of differences to talk about. And what really got me thinking about these differences was last Christmas when because of the pandemic, I ended up spending my first Christmas based entirely here in Sweden. And I see that as a huge opportunity because I got to celebrate my girlfriend and her family. It's the first time I really got to adopt and welcome that Swedish Christmas tradition. And it was fun, even if unplanned. And and as I say, really helped me get to grips with some of the differences and really appreciate how we do Christmas different in these two countries. And with that in mind, today I'll be presenting you guys with five of the biggest differences I noticed between how we celebrate Christmas in the UK versus what they do here in Sweden. But I would love to hear from you guys at the end about whether you agree or not. If you're also not from Sweden, what are some of the differences that you noticed when you first got here? You can let me know all of that good stuff down in the comment section below. But let's get started and talk about some of the differences that I spotted. And the only place I could really start this list today is with a blindingly obvious difference to us Brits when we first arrive here in Sweden, and that's that we celebrate Christmas Day on different days. Yes, that's right. You guys will know by now because we've talked about this before, but here in Sweden, they celebrate their high times or their hergetida on the aftons as opposed to the darks. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, let me try and break it down. So here in Sweden, they call the 24th of December Yul Afton, which is kind of Christmas afternoon. And then on the 25th, they call it Yul Dag or Christmas Day, a bit like we do in the UK. The difference being all of the celebrations here take place on Yule Afton or Christmas Eve. And to be honest with you, Sweden isn't alone in its preference to celebrate on the 24th. In fact, that's super, super popular in the traditionally Catholic parts of Europe. For example, in Spain, they still celebrate on Christmas Eve. I don't entirely know the rationale behind this. So if you guys do know, fill me in in the comment section down below. But as I say, it makes for a real difference when you first arrive as a Brit because you're getting ready to celebrate on the 25th. Your advent calendar, for example, goes up to the 25th, all of the presents and the meal happens that day, but here in Sweden, you're celebrating a day early. And for those of you out there like me who are in a relationship with a Swede, do you not just see this as a huge opportunity? I mean, we get to celebrate twice every single year. Once on Swedish Christmas and once on English Christmas. We get the best of both worlds. And talking of which day we celebrate Christmas on leads me on to the second big difference that I noticed between the UK and Sweden and how we celebrate Christmas, and that's in how much time off work you get. Yes, that's right, because here in Sweden during Christmas week, you'll be off for three days. Yes, there are three red days here in Sweden or bank holidays during that Christmas week, the 24th, the 25th and the 26th. And then the following week in the run up to New Year's, you get both the 31st, so New Year's Eve, and New Year's Day off as well. Which to me as a Brit felt like I was lucking out and I won the lottery when I first moved here to Sweden because in the UK, we just get the 25th, the 26th, and the 1st of January. So suddenly I was getting two more days out of nowhere and I couldn't think of anything better. And before you guys begin ridiculing the UK for only giving workers three days off during Christmas, I know how stingy, right? I have to stick up my hand here and say, you know what? It might be less days, but we do have one very important difference in our pockets in the UK. And that's that if those days fall at the weekend, they get replaced the following week. Yes, that's right. If you look at this year, for example, Christmas day, the 25th, when we celebrate, is a Saturday and then Boxing Day or Anandar Yul is on the Sunday. And so here in Sweden, you miss out on those holidays because they take place at the weekend. So when you go back to work on the Monday, it's just a normal day. But that's not the case in the UK. Since you miss those two days at the weekend, they replace them the week after. So in the UK this year, they will be getting both Monday and Tuesday off work for free as a replacement for those bank holidays they missed at the weekend. And you guys know by now that I'm all for giving Sweden credit where its practices are more progressive and advanced than they are in the UK. I will totally point that out, call it out and give it kudos. But on this occasion, I feel like Sweden could be learning something from the UK because we never miss out on one of our red days. All throughout the year, they 
they get replaced if they fall at the weekend. And I think that's something that Sweden needs to take note of. The third big difference in how we celebrate Christmas between Sweden and the UK is when it comes to the Christmas food. And I guess this one's a little bit predictable because it's not so weird that in different countries we have different traditional foods that we eat on our Christmas day celebration. But with that said, I'm willing to go out there and say that I think the food in the UK is a little bit more coherent. And just to be clear here, that doesn't mean that I'm saying that the English food is better or worse than the Swedish food. I'm just saying that in the UK, we pick a theme for our Christmas food and we stick to it. So if you look at our Christmas day celebratory meal, it's kind of like an exaggerated Sunday roast. So it's all of the usual foods that you would have on a Sunday traditionally in the UK with a brown gravy sauce on top and then all of the Christmas extras. So we're talking pigs in blankets, we're talking kind of Christmas vegetables, stuffing, the works. And then you look at what they have in Sweden. Yes, you guys, because if this is your first Swedish Yule board this year, you're gonna be overwhelmed with how many different types of food there are on that table. It's basically like a huge buffet, but unlike in the UK, there is no red thread that runs throughout all of the dishes. They basically throw the kitchen sink at you and they give you absolutely everything they can find in their house. And when I've asked Swedes where this comes from, they've quite often said to me that actually the tradition comes from the fact that obviously a number of years ago, Sweden was quite a poor country. And as a result, they were kind of save up all of their luxury foods and on Christmas they would kind of throw it all at you because they really want to kind of celebrate and mark the high time. So that's how we ended up with kind of salmon for example right next to seal, right next to like this potato gratin with also fish inside it and then you've got like salads and meatballs and sausages and it's just kind of like this buffet of every single food you can dream of. So with that in mind you can probably imagine why I was more than a little bit confused when I had my first Yule board here in Sweden because there is no rhyme or reason to why there are so many different types of food all wedged together on this table. There is no pattern, there is no kind of through story here, You're not supposed to start at one end and finish at another. It's just every kind of food they can imagine thrown together and put in front of you at Christmas. And hey, I'm not saying it's not fun to have all of your favorite foods on Christmas day. I'm just saying it's a different way to celebrate to how we do in the UK. And talking of the differences in our Christmas routines brings me nicely onto the fourth thing on this list today, which is of course the fact that here in Sweden, we have a lot more Christmas traditions than we have in the UK. Yes, you guys, I've pointed this out before, but here in Sweden, they seem to love their traditions. It's a super tradition rich country where they create these habits and they continue them year after year and build upon them. It doesn't seem to be quite the same in the UK. Of course, we have our Christmas traditions, but the kind of breadth of them is not as big as it is here in Sweden. And the only way that I can really make this point in this video is to kind of do like a Swedish Christmas bingo. So I'm about to name a few different things that lots of Swedes will probably be doing during the Christmas season. And I guarantee that most of the Swedes watching will have to admit that they do at least 75% of these things every single year. Yes, because I'm pretty sure that lots of you out there will be having Advent Fika every Sunday with your family. And if you're not doing that, you're probably going to a church celebration or some sort of choir rehearsal on the 13th for December on Lucia. And if you're not doing that, then it's probably likely that you're watching the Yule calendar or that on Yule Afton, you'll be watching Kala Anka or Donald Duck at 3 p.m. And lots of you out there will probably be drinking Glug or Yulemist during the Christmas season. The list goes on and on and on. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing at all. In fact, it's super cozy and it really helps to get you into that mindset that Christmas is on the way by following all of these different traditions religiously throughout the season. But you get my point. In the UK, we just don't have these same traditions. There are some things that we do. For example, it's very common that we open the presents in the morning on Christmas day, then we have a meal, and then maybe we sit down and watch TV with the family in the evening. But it's just not that common that we have all of these other things that we do in the lead up to Christmas. So I think it's really nice. I've said before, Sweden has a lot of traditions all throughout the year, and it's fun to see them religiously following them and getting passed down through the different generations. And talking of how we spend those last few precious hours on Christmas day, this is the fifth and final thing that I noticed as a big difference between what we do in Sweden and in the UK. Yes, because in the UK, if you've had your family over during the day, it's likely that in the evening on the 25th of December, you'll be having a board game night. Yes, because to most of us Brits, board games is an important part of the Christmas experience. It's about gathering your family together, having a lot of fun, being silly, and just competing with one another. Whereas here in Sweden, it feels like board games is something that isn't very specific to Christmas. In fact, they have board game nights all throughout the year. There are people that are obsessed with board games here and go to board game shops to buy the latest versions of their favorite classics. But I guess the jury is really out on this one because as I said at the beginning of this video, I've only spent one Christmas here in Sweden, so I haven't got a lot of experience to draw on about what it looks like in the evenings on Yule after and after you've had your meal and done your presents. So maybe some of you Swedes can let me know down in the comments below. What are you
you doing on Christmas Day in the evening? Are you celebrating with board games like us or am I right and you're doing something different? Maybe watching TV or just socialising with, with your family? Let me know down below. And with that said, this is the final video that I'll be releasing before the Christmas celebrations really get underway. So wherever you are in the world, whether you're celebrating on the 24th here in Sweden or the 25th in the UK, I would just like to wish you a good Yule or a Merry Christmas. And I look forward to seeing you guys once the celebrations are over and we're all a good couple of kilograms heavier because of all the Christmas food we've eaten. But as I say, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you haven't liked it yet, be awesome if you could. I release new videos every single week. So if you're not subscribed yet, I would really appreciate it if you could do that. That means so much to me. And I really appreciate that you guys continue to watch and follow along with all of my videos. Until next time, have a Merry Christmas and I hope you guys have a great time, whatever you're up to. Bye-bye.